Today's movie is a short one. It is Frankenstein, 1910. As I am apt to do, I was cruising Amazon Prime looking for something to watch, and I stumbled across the original film version of Frankenstein, 1910. It was a Thomas Alva Edison production. He is best known for inventing the phonograph, the movie camera, and a whole bunch of other stuff, so I gave it a watch. It was a pretty good movie, and it followed the Mary Shelley novel pretty well until the end. This is the first film adaptation of Mary Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, or the Modern Prometheus. This is a short, only about 12 minutes long or so. But what was really interesting about the film was its use of camera tricks. The reason being that they had to invent everything they wanted to do because there was really no one to look to. For example, they reversed the film in one part to great effect. They also used images in the mirror to show the entry of characters and the transmutation of characters. They craftily used the magician's trick of covering an item rather than removing it to hide the monster. This silent short has a pretty low rating of 6.5 on imdb.com. Only 54% of the audiences liked it on RottenTomatoes.com. So I guess I'm in the minority on this one. Actors. Right. And I'm a Shakespearean actor. Only three actors were listed on IMDB.com for this movie. But I'm pretty sure somebody's father was cast also. Plus there was a servant and another guy. All three of the principals were uncredited. They are Augustus Phillips, Mary Fuller, and Charles Ogley. Augustus Phillips played the role of Dr. Frankenstein, but I think the monster was his dissertation and he may not have passed. Phillips was born in 1874 and he died in 1952. This was his first film, but he amassed 160 films between 1910 and 1921. Mary Fuller was in the role of Elizabeth. She was born in 1888 and died in 1973. She amassed an amazing 226 film credits between 1907 and 1917. In 1917, she disappeared. A writer found her in 1924 living in Washington, D.C. with her mother. However, she soon disappeared again. In 1973, it was discovered that she had died in a mental hospital of natural causes. It has never been determined why she was in the hospital or what she did in all those missing years. Charles Ogley played the monster. Ogley was born in 1865 and died in 1940. He performed in a striking 327 films between 1908 and 1926. His films include The Ten Commandments, 1923, and The Thundering Herd, 1925. The role in this film makes him the first actor to ever play the monster. Story. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Frankenstein, Augustus Phillips, says farewell to his father and his beloved Elizabeth, Mary Fuller, as he leaves for university. Once away at school, he becomes, shall we say, obsessed with the secrets of life. One night, he writes Elizabeth, saying he will be glad to get busy with her once he solves this little life problem. Frankenstein has a big cabinet in his room with a huge cauldron inside. He also has a skeleton sitting in a chair, but I'm not sure if that's metaphorical or not. He begins to create his, quote, perfect human, unquote, in the cauldron. Frankenstein mixes his chemicals. The monster, Charles Ogley, begins to form in a smoky haze of the cauldron. What the filmmaker did was create a model of the monster with a skeleton inside. Next, they burn the model. In the movie, this film sequence was shown in reverse, creating the effect of the monster being formed from nothing. It's a great scene, and I found myself leaning in and watching the details. Frankenstein utters the line, It's alive, it's alive. Frankenstein sees that the monster is well. Monstrous. Frankenstein runs from the cabinet and flops on his bed. Uh, create a monster, leave it in the next room, and go to bed? Not a good plan. I want to stop for a second and talk about the look of the monster. The film quality is very bad. Somehow, the monster reminds me of Kikuchio, the wild samurai played by Toshiro Mifune in The Seven Samurais, 1954. I also thought at first the monster had a flat head, but an examination of a better photograph showed that it was only the band where the wild hair was attached. The makeup and the hairstyle are very reflective of that used in Kabuki theater. Anyway, the monster comes in the bedroom and stands over its creator. 
Frankenstein passes out on the floor. Frankenstein's servant comes in and the monster flees unseen. Frankenstein heads home and under the care of Elizabeth, he begins to shake the demons that haunt him. Many reviewers take this to mean that Frankenstein could only create the monster because his mind was flooded with evil. This is pretty well borne out at the end. One day, Frankenstein is in his room reading and Elizabeth enters. She is first shown in the mirror. She then comes into the frame with Frankenstein. She talks of their pending marriage. When she leaves the room, the monster is shown entering when he appears as the reflection in the mirror. The monster complains that Frankenstein has Elizabeth, but where does he fit in? Or pantomimes to that effect. When Elizabeth returns, the monster hides behind a curtain. Once Elizabeth leaves, the monster attacks, but he finally sees himself in the mirror. The monster is horrified by his own appearance. The monster flees. Later, Frankenstein and Elizabeth are married. There are a lot of actors at the wedding. At last, the couple is alone. Frankenstein is putting out the candles in the room with the huge glass windows when the monster shows up. The monster enters the room where Elizabeth is alone. She runs out in horror to the glass room with the monster close behind. Frankenstein begs the monster not to hurt Elizabeth. Frankenstein gets all snotty with the monster, so it runs away. The monster ends up in the bedroom and looks with anguish at itself in the mirror. Suddenly, the monster pops inside the mirror. Another good camera trick. Frankenstein comes in and faces the monster in the mirror, driving it away. The image of the monster is replaced by that of Frankenstein. Another good camera trick. Frankenstein and Elizabeth are happy, and the monster is out of their lives and out of Frankenstein's head. Well, I tell you, I don't think I could sleep in that room until that mirror was gone. Love the house, honey. We're moving. World famous short summary. People that create monsters shouldn't have glass doors. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I really appreciate you spending the time listening. You can find connections to social media and email on my site at classicmoviereb.com. There are links in the podcast show notes as well. This is an independent show, and there's a lot that you can do to help out. First and most importantly, jump over to Apple Podcasts and give me a review. It really helps the show get found. If you want to comment, help, or recommend the movie, email me 